Hello students and welcome back to English class. Today we'll begin with a new chapter of your short story textbook. Name of chapter is The Horse and Two Goats written by R.K. Narayan. To tell you about the story, this story is set in a small Indian village called Krita. An important characters in this story are a man named Muni a very impoverished impoverished man named muni his wife and also another important character in this story is an american businessman muni and his wife know only their local language whereas this american businessman knew only english two are unable to communicate with each other muni speaks about his own life while the american speaks about his own life and the lack of proper communication or a pro proper language to communicate creates humor in this story that is a main theme of this story or uh, we can say that the author presents a clash between indian and the western culture muni represents indian culture while the american businessman represents american culture now speaking about the style of this story in this story Narayan R K Narayan employs simple and natural style of storyteller narration is very ordinary narration of very ordinary events in the lives of the character is done in an unaffected manner or in a very plain prose incidents flow naturally one out of another in the same way as they would actually happen in the life story just tells itself events happens and characters lives in innumerable equation of human relationship his language is of ordinary people language or language belongs to everyday world of ordinary people as a result it's quite easy to follow and moreover the sentences are very short and intensely communicative and it is evident all throughout the story and so now let's begin with the story the horse and two goats written by rk narayan as i told you the story happens in a small village called krita and important character one of the important character is muni or we can say that muni and his wife so let's begin the story of the 700000 villages dotting the map of india kritham was probably the tiniest indicated on the district survey map by a microscopic dot so the story begins with a good description about that place that is the small village called kritham so what author says about kritham is of the 700000 villages dotting the map of india around 700000 villages are marked in the map of india and of that kritham is probably the tiniest kritham is said to be the most smallest indicated on the district survey map by a microscopic dot so because it is very small in size it is indicated using a microscopic dot but its signs did not prevent it getting itself the grandiose name kritham which meant in tamil coronet or crown on the brow of the subcontinent though the signs of the village is very small it's given a very good name name of the village is kritham and actually its meaning in tamil is coronet or crown or as if it is a crown of the place on the brow of the subcontinent the village consisted of la less than 30 houses only one of them built with brick and cement painted a brilliant yellow and blue all over with the with the gorgeous carving of gods and gargoyles on its balustrade it was known as a big house so about the village or the condition of people in the village it's clearly uh, pictureized by the structure of the houses over there the village consists of less than 30 houses and of these less than 30 houses only one of them is built with brick and cement so that clearly indicates that majority of the people over there are poverty stricken ones painted a brilliant yellow and blue all over with a gorgeous carving of gods and gargoyles on its balustrade it was known as big house so this house which is made of brick and cement again a very good description is given by the author about this house 
This house is painted with brilliant yellow and blue color. All over with the gorgeous carving of gods and gargoyles. Gorgeous means lovely. With lovely carvings of gods and gargoyles. Gargoyles meaning carved human or animal face. Mainly we find in uh, temples and so. Carved human or animal faces and so. On its balustrade. Balustrade means ornamental pattern. It's found in the balcony, terrace and so. That is ornamental patterns of various structures which we find in the balcony, terrace or, or uh, such areas and so of the houses. And this house is called as big house. The other houses. So only one house is made of cement and brick. Right. So let's see how the other houses are made of. The other houses distributed in the four streets were generally of bamboo thatch, straw, mud and other unspecified material. So the big house is made of cement and brick whereas other small houses were made of bamboo, straw, mud and other unspecified materials. Muni's was the last house in the fourth street beyond which stretched the field. Now about the character, our character Muni. Muni's house was said to be the last one of that fourth row. And after that, it is a field. In his prosperous days, Muni had owned a flock of 40 sheep and goats and sallied forth every morning, driving the flock to the highway a couple of miles away. So now, what the author says is that in his prosperous days, before Muni had prosperous days. So now, what may be the condition of Muni then? He is a very, very poor man now. He is in a very impoverished or in a poverty-stricken stage now. So in his prosperous days, what did Muni owe? Muni had flock of 40 sheep and goats and sallied forth every morning. So every morning he will start with his flock of sheep to the nearby highway, which is a couple of miles away. There he would sit on the pedestal of a clay statue of Oz while his cattle grazed around. So, when his cattle were grazing near this highway, what Muni used to do was, he would sit on the pedestal of a clay statue. Pedestal of a clay statue. See this clay statue, it's going to be one of the important items in the story. Okay, so, a pedestal of the clay statue of a horse while his cattle charted, uh, while his cattle grazed around. So, it was a clay statue of a horse. Okay. A clay statue of a horse was there near this highway. Where Muni used to take his animals for grazing. And I am repeating it again. This clay statue is going to be one of the important elements in the story. Clear? So, he carried a crook at the end of a bamboo pole and snapped foliage from the avenue trees to feed his flock. He also gathered faggots and dry sticks, bundled them and carried them home for the fuel for fuel at sunset. So what Muni used to do was he carried a crook. You know what's crook? Which is used for plucking mangoes or any other item, that instrument which we use? Yeah. Likewise, he carried a crook at the end of a bamboo pool, pole and snapped foliage from the avenue trees to feed his flock. So using this crew, what he used to do was he used to uh, get the, he used to uh, pluck the uh, foliages or the leaves from the trees in order to feed his animal. And he also gathered faggots. Faggots means bunch of sticks which tied together, dried bunches of sticks. And dried sticks bundled them and carried them back for uh, fuel at sunset. So while coming back, he used to carry faggots and dry sticks in order to use as fuel uh, at home. So in this first paragraph, what we came to know is about the village called Kritam, about the big house of that village, about other uh, houses in that Kritam village, then about the important character called Muni, regarding what was his occupation and uh, what were his daily routine. Now, moving on to the second para. His wife lit the domestic fire at dawn, boiled water in a mud pot, threw into it a handful of millet flour, added salt and gave him his first nourishment for the day. When he started out, she would put 
in his hand a packed lunch once again the same millet cook into a little bowl which he could swallow with the raw onion at midday so now about his wife what his wife used to do for moon early in the morning she would lit the domestic fire at dawn that is usually the indian custom right burning the um lighting the domestic fire early in the morning itself that is uh, that indicates prosperity of indian household actually boil water in a mud pot threw into it a handful of millet flour so that was the item or that was the grain or uh, that was the item which uh, muni and his wife used to have always millet 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 flour and it salt and gave him the first nourishment of the day so being poor muni as well as his wife did not have a very good nutritious food as we used to have now as we are having now so the uh, morning breakfast is a very simple item we can call it as a millet soup or anything like that and uh, she used to boil millet in uh, water and uh, would add some salt in order to taste good and when he was going in order to grease the animal or the wife or the lunch packed by his wife or munius bowl of millet millet cooked into small bowl little bowl which he would swallow with raw onion uh, at midday that was a meal of muni his fortunes had declined gradually unnoticed later and later what happened to muni was his prosperous days started declining his fortunes meaning his prosperous uh, prosperous days it had declined unnoticed from a flock of 40 which he drove into a pen at night his stock had now come down into two goats to the two goats which were tethered to the trunk of a drumstick tree which grew in front of his hut and from which occasionally muni could shake down drumsticks so now what's it about the present plight of muni before he had a flock of 40 sheep and goats and now it's reduced to what number only two goats so before author says that because the number was uh, too large it was uh, 40 sheep and goats he used to put them in a pen you know what's pen um where uh, we keep the goats and sheep area which is used for an enclosed area which is used for keeping the goats and sheep before he used to keep them in the pen but since now it is only two goats what he used to do is he used to tether to the trunk of a drumstick tree tether means he used to tie them to the trunk of a drumstick tree you know what's drumstick right so drumstick tree which grew in front of his hut and from which occasionally muni could shake down drumstick so he used to tie uh, these two goats tether these two goats onto the trunk of a drumstick tree which grew in front of his hut actually the tree is not his own but he used to tie them to this drumstick tree and even occasionally whenever there is drumstick he used to shake down and take the drumstick from the tree this morning he got six so that morning when he shook the tree he got six drumstick he carried them with a sense of triumph so when he got six drumstick he was so happy he carried it as if he had done a great deed to his house although no one could say precisely who owned the tree it was us because he lived in its shadow so author is telling no one know no one actually knew who is the owner of this drumstick tree but because it is near to the house of muni muni considered it as his own because he lived in its shadow because his goats used to live under the shade of this drumstick tree his wife said if you were content with the drumstick leaves alone i could boil and salt some for you so when he took the drumstick to his house what was the reaction of his wife wife was telling so wife was telling to muni if you were content with the drumstick leaves alone if you will be happy with a drumstick leaf uh, which is boiled using uh, which is boiled in water with salt i would make it for you but preparing a drumstick dish drumstick means it is a vegetable right so uh, with that we can make a uh, curry or whatever we want right so uh, wife is telling if you just want to boil the drumstick leaf i'll do it for you i'll boil it with some salt for you ho oh, i'm tired of eating those leaves i have a craving to chew the drumstick out of sauce i tell you 
सो मुनीस चले नो 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 आई डोंट वॉन्ट द स्लीव हिलो आई एम रियली टायर्ड ऑफ हैविंग इट आई हैव अ क्रेविंग क्रेविंग मीन्स आई हैव अ डिज़ायर और आई एम टेम्पटेड टू च्यू द ड्रम स्टिक आउट ऑफ सॉस आई वॉन्ट टू च्यू द ड्रम स्टिक विद इट्स सॉस आई टेल यू सो ही एक्चुअली नीडेड अ वेरी डेलीशियस आइटम अ डेलीशियस मील यूजिंग ड्रम स्टिक सो वाइफ इज चेलिंग यू हैव ओनली फोर टीथ इन यूर जॉब बट यूर क्रेविंग इज फॉर बिग थिंग्स ऑल राइट गेट द स्टेप फॉर द सॉस आई विल प्रिपेयर इट फॉर यू आफ्टर ऑल नेक्स्ट ईयर यू मे नॉट बी अलाइंग टू आस्क फॉर एनी थिंग बट फिज गेट मी ऑल द स्टेप इंक्लूडिंग अ मेशर ऑफ राइज और मिलेट एंड आई विल सैटिस्फाई योर अन ओली क्रेविंग अ स्टोर इज एम टी टूडे दाल चिल्ली करी लीव मस्टर्ड कॉरिएंडर जिंजली ऑयल एंड वन लार्ज पोटेटो गो आउट एंड गेट ऑल दीज He repeated the list after her in order not to miss any item and walked off to the shop in the third street. What is wife telling about Muni? Muni has got only 4 teeth and his desire is for big things. That is more than what he could have with 4 teeth is his desire. He want to chew the drumstick sauce, right? So with this 4 teeth how can he? That is a question asked by wife. Moreover she describes his desire as an unholy desire, unholy craving. I guess it is more than what is possible within the limits. He doesn't have enough items to prepare this drumstick sauce, so that is why it is described as unholy desire. So finally, wife is chilling. I'll prepare it for you because don't know. Only God knows whether you'll be alive next year. So if you bring all these items, I will prepare it for you. And she gives a list of the items. And just see how Muni was going to that shop. He was repeating the list one after the other so that he would not miss any of the items to be bought from the shop. Muni sat patiently on an upturned packing case below the platform of the shop. The shopman paid no attention to him. Muni kept clearing his throat, coughing and sneezing until the shopman could not stand it any more and demanded, "What ails you?" You will fly with that seat into the gutter if you sneeze so hard young man Muni laughed inordinately in order to please the shopman it being called young man this completely won the shopman over he liked the sense of humor to be appreciated so in order to buy these items where is a muni going to the shop so we know that muni is very poor right he doesn't have enough money to buy all these items he is planning to get the items for credit from the shop so when you are getting the items for credit usually you use your you lose your self esteem right so you have to stand in queue waiting for the uh, waiting very obediently for the blessing of the shopkeeper to say only if he desires to give you you will get the item see on an upturned packing case on the platform of the shop Shopkeeper knew very well that Muni has come to get some item for credit, so he didn't mind him at all. So, in order to attract the attention of the shopkeeper, what was Muni doing? He was clearing his throat. He was coughing and sneezing until the shopkeeper got attracted to Muni. He was actually angry with Muni because he was continuously coughing and sneezing in order to attract his attention. So, the man is asking, "What ails you? What is your problem?" If you keep on sneezing and coughing like this, you will fly off these cases into the gutter. Young man, that is how the shopkeeper addressed Muni. Young man. So hearing this term, young man, Muni started laughing inordinately without any control. So the shopkeeper, this completely won the shopman over. Because this man, one of the weakness of this shopkeeper is that he likes his humor to be appreciated by anyone. Since Muni laughed over the dialogue of the shopkeeper, shopkeeper was very pleased because at least there is one someone to enjoy his humor. So this made the man get attracted to Muni. So by this humoring the shopman, Muni could always ask for one or two items of food, promising repayment later. So this is the usual technique of Muni. Muni will go and sit there. He will keep on coughing and sneezing. Man will get angry. Man will uh, say something. This will make Muni laugh. Actually, he is laughing purposefully, deliberately. So man will be pleased over Muni 
and finally using this technique he will get the items from the man from the shopkeeper saying that he would repay it later some days the shopman was in good mood and gave it certain days the man will give in shop shopkeeper will give the items certain days he will not give it is based on the mood of the shopkeeper and sometimes he would lose his temper suddenly and bark at muni for daring to ask for credit but certain days what happens is that shopkeeper would lose his temper he will not be able to control himself so he will be barking at muni for daring to ask for credit he will even ask muni how dare you ask me for credit again and again the shopman said if you could find 5 rupees in quarter and you will have paid off an ancient debt how much have you got now so shopkeeper is telling first of all get at least 5 rupees and a quarter quarter means 25 paise and you pay that ancient debt you pay the debt which you are supposed to give me long long before how much have you got now the man is asking okay fine what is the amount of money you have with you now so muni is telling i'll pay you everything on the first of the next month so muni is telling please I don't have money now. I'll pay everything. I'll repay it back by the first of the next month, as always. And whom do you expect to rob by then? So shopkeeper is telling, "This is your technique always." So whom are you planning to rob this time? Muni felt caught and mumbled, so he didn't have any answer. So he started mumbling from there. Muni is telling, "My daughter has sent word that she will be sending me money." So Muni told a lie there. See, my daughter told me that she will be sending me money this month. Have you a daughter? Sneer the shopman. So shopman is asking in a sneering manner. Sneering means in a mocking manner or uh, in a very um, funny manner. He is asking, "Have you a daughter?" And she is sending you money. For what purpose may I know? So the shopkeeper is asking, "Okay, fine. If you have got a daughter, just tell me for what purpose your daughter is planning to send you money." Muni. birthday 50th birthday said muni quietly birthday how old are you so muni is telling because it is my 50th birthday my daughter is sending me money so shopkeeper is asking okay fine you tell me how old are you muni repeated weakly not being sure of it himself 50 he almost calculated his age from the time of the great famine when he stood as i as a parapet around the village well but who could calculate such things accurately nowadays with so many famines occurring the shopman felt encouraged when other customers stood around to watch and comment so what's the shopkeeper asking to muni what is your age and to that muni is replying i am 50 years or he is telling that it's my 50th birthday that's going to be due next month so even muni was not sure actually what is his age and how he calculated his age is by calculating what was his age when the famine struck that village once he calculated his age from the time of the great famine when he stood as i as a parapet around a village well he don't know when he is born or in which year he is born he just know one thing he was of a particular height he was of the height of the village uh, parapet of the village well when the famine occurred he know in which year the famine occurred so by using that connection he used to calculate his age other than that he don't know to calculate his age accurately shopman felt really encouraged because other customers also came forward to hear the conversation between this shopkeeper and the muni more likely you are 70 more likely you are 70 he said to muni you also forget that you mentioned a birthday 5 weeks ago when you wanted castor oil for your holy bath so the shopkeeper is telling moreover you are simply telling lie i know it very well that's what the shopkeeper meant here because five weeks ago he said that it was his birthday and he needed some castor oil in order to have bath so at this muni unobtrusively rose and moved off hearing this he was sure that he will not get any item from the shopkeeper today so at this muni unobtrusively rose and moved off unobtrusively means without attracting any attention 
he simply rose from there and moved off he later told his wife that scoundrel would not give me anything so go out and sell the drumstick for what they are worth so muni is coming back to house and telling his wife this hand only desire cannot be satisfied he is sure about it now so he is telling to his wife that scoundrel is not willing to give me anything you do one thing you take this drumstick and sell it wherever possible he fell he flung himself down in a corner to recoup from the pat- fatigue of his visit to the shop his wife said you are getting no sauce today nor anything else i can find anything to give you to eat fast till the evening it will do you good take the goats and we gone now she cried and added don't come back before the sun sun is down he knew that if he obeyed her she would somehow conjure up some food for him in the evening only he must be careful not to argue and irritate her so he is coming back and telling to his wife you go and sell this drumstick for whatever price possible so saying so we find him moving to the corner of the room in order to recoup himself from the fatigue of his visit to the shop recoup means in order to recover recover from the fatigue of his visit to the shop so what did his wife say there is nothing to be given i cannot provide you anything to eat there is nothing uh, no item available to be given so better fast till evening and also she is ordering him take the goats and be gone now go you need not stay here now and again one more order is given by the wife don't come back before the sun is down you should not return back return before the sun is down he knew that if he obeyed her she would somehow conjure up some food for him in the evening only he must be careful not to argue and irritate her so he had been with his wife for past many years so he know a character very well so he know very well that if he obeys her and if he comes uh, back only after sunset definitely by one or the other mean she will have conjured or she would have collected some f- for muni somehow but only thing is that he should not argue with her and he should not irritate her her temper was undependable in the morning but improved by evening time usually her character is so her temper was uncontrollable in the morning and usually it gets improved by evening time she was sure to go out and work rank home in the big house and keep a dinner ready for him in the evening he know her very well by evening by working in other houses maybe in the big house she will go and sweep uh, she will go sweep and scrub over there she would grind corn in the big house by doing such works by one or the other manner she would have made some enough food chef in order to dine for uh, in order to have a good dinner for muni unleashing the goats from the drumstick tree muni started out driving them ahead and uttering weird cries from time to time in order to urge them on so unleashing the goat we find muni going for his uh, daily job of grazing these two goats you know what's unleashing right it is untying that rope which was uh, tied onto the drumstick tree in order to keep the animals over there and then uh, he was um, while he was moving forward he was uttering some weird cries usually when you are grazing cows sheep and so you might have seen uh, that uh, person that is a shepherd will be uh, doing uh, giving some weird cries in order to make the animals move forward similarly he was also doing the same he passed through the village with his head bowed in thought so while he was moving forward he was not looking anywhere his head was bowed down in thought he did not want to look at any one or to be accosted and uh, moreover he did not want to look at any one or to be accosted accosted means to speak to others he did not want to speak to any one a couple of cronies lounging in the cricket uh, in the temple corridor hailed him but he ignored their call so while he was moving forward a couple of cronies cronies means close friend two friends who were lounging on the temple corridor usually in the as per the indian custom uh, what we can find is uh, people who don't have in uh, much work or who are uh, jobless will be sitting here and there and talking right they will be involved in chit chats 
So similarly, two cronies, two best friends of this Muni called him from the temple corridor. But he ignored their call. But he didn't mind. He went forward. He moved forward. The shopman had said that it was 70. At 70, one, at 70, one only waited to be summoned by God. When he was dead, what would his wife do? They had lived in each other's company since they were children. He had been told on their day, on their day of wedding, that he was ten years old and she was eight. Progeny, none. Perhaps a large progeny would have brought, would have, would have brought him the blessings of God. So while he was moving forward, he thought, "Now I am right, right now." As for what the shopman said, "I am seventy now." At the age of seventy, I cannot expect anything other than. Hearing for the call of God, wait, uh, wait for the call of God, that is, to become, uh, to die soon. So he thought, once I die, what will happen to my wife? For many years, right from the childhood, they were leading, uh, they were, uh, leading a family life together. Because on those days, child marriage was quite common in India, right? He had been told on their day of wedding that he was 10 years and she was 8. So what he came to know on his wedding day, what elders told him is that he has um, become 10 years old and his wife was around 8 years then. Then progeny, none. So they have been living for many years together. But did they have any children? Progeny means children. None. Perhaps a large progeny would have brought him the blessing of gods. So he was thinking, if I had children, it would have been a great blessing. But now I don't have children also. Only on the outskirts did he lift his head and look up. He urged and bullied the goats until they meandered along to the foot of the horse statue on the edge of the village. So only after reaching the outskirt or after crossing the village border, he raised his head. He urged and bullied the goats until they meandered along to the foot of the horse statue on the edge of the village. I told you, there is one important element in this. We have reached to this element, that is the horse statue. So now let's move ahead. He sat on its pedestal for the rest of the day. So once he reaches there, what he used to do is that he would allow the goats to graze and he would be seated on the pedestal for the rest of the day. Pedestal means the um, below, basement part of the statue. The advantage of this was that he could watch the highway and see the lorries and buses pass through the hills and it gave him a sense of belonging to the larger world. So what he would do is, he will sit near the pedestal and he could watch very properly buses and lorries which was moving down or through the hills. And it gave him a feeling that he belonged to a larger world. Because he could see buses and lorries, he thought that he was also the part of that big world. The pedestal of the statue was broad enough for him to move around as the sun travelled down. And this pedestal, it was quite a big one or broad enough so that it could move around when the sun travelled up westward. Or he could also crouch under the belly of the horse for shade. Even he could crouch, crouch means he could um, lie properly under the belly of the horse for shade so that he won't get the powerful sun rays. So that is how he utilized this element that is all statue which was there near that highway or on that hill. So dear students, remaining we will continue in the next class. So till we meet again, goodbye.